So now we're going to get um, started microtoming. Over here, this is what we call the flywheel. The cryostat is, um, our cryostat is actually HM505E micron. This is our flywheel. This is our safety lock. When you're changing the blade or changing the specimen or making adjustments, you want to lock it. How you lock it is you push forward and push the flywheel forward and it locks it. Over on this side, we have two buttons. This is for advancing and retracting this chuck head. So you push it this way, it goes back. If you see this red light, what that means is it's automatically advancing all the way to its point. It'll automatically do that. So just to give you an idea, this is bringing it forward. Now if I want to fast forward it, I can push this. Ah, oh, should come on. Maybe it's just, there we go. Now that's telling me it's going to fast forward or fast reverse. You want to be really careful with that because you don't want to bring your um, sample or your chuck head here too fast and actually hit this knife plate. You'll damage the knife plate and possibly damage the, this um, chuck holder. And that could be quite expensive. Okay. So I'm going to turn that off because I don't want it to rapidly do that. But if I want to press and hold, if I need it to go back faster, if I want it to stop, I click press it again. This does a counting. Um, it'll tell you the sum. It'll tell you how you can select um, this, the actual count, the sum total, how far it's traveling forward. You can just reset it. These are your micron levels. We have it going up to 20. When you start going into this area here, like 30, 40, and 50, our microtome is unusual in that you actually have to set it to this trim thickness. Basically, we're not really able to accurately use those as far as I can tell. Our light is not working right now. We need to get a bulb for it, but that's the light button. If you need to set the temperature, you can set it here. That's the actual set temperature. And I went over, um, when you first turn the machine on with the switch in the back, you're going to see an E03 error code, which we went over. You're going to push that, and it'll retract all the way back, and the E03 error code will disappear, and it'll start coming up to temperature, or going down to temperature, I should say. This microtome, you never want to leave a sample in the microtome overnight because at midnight it's preset to defrost at midnight of every night so it will damage your samples so always take them out and, and store them separately okay let's get started I have some um, blades here these are used for just facing or practice blades this is our blade holder actually before I get started why don't we take our sample and mount the sample and show how to do that I happen to have this there's other um, molds and different things but for our sample today we have this one this is tissue tech OCT compound I highly recommend this particular brand and no other I've used several other brands and this has given me the best results um, this stands for optimal cutting temperature compound So I'm putting a little bit on there and I'm going to wait till it starts um, turning a little bit white and frosty on the bottom to give it to mount it good because I don't want it to thaw my sample too much. Now I see it start, start to turn a little bit white so I can mount my sample on here. And you want to try and get it on there as evenly as possible. You're just basically kind of freezing it or gluing it on and then we'll wait a few minutes. Now if you're in a big hurry, what you can do is I have this freeze spray that can help you. I don't use this too often because once in a while it freezes so quickly that it doesn't adhere good and get um, to the bottom with the two. This is colder than that and sometimes it just doesn't adhere good and it'll want to come off. So I don't use it too often, but if you did, you just give it a little spray and it gets it started quicker.
there's different brands of this um, cold spray. All right, to mount our tissue, that's frozen enough. You put it in the chuck. This um, loosens it. You slide it in. Try and get it as evenly with the perpendicular with this blade as you can. And then you're going to turn this. Now you don't need to crank it tight, just a little finger tightening is good enough. Our microtome holder is unusual in that you have to actually press this um, plate on the knife holder to slide the knife in. Most you don't do that. Most if you just release this knife release and, um, lever or knife clamp lever, that's usually good enough. But ours, you have to actually press the plate. It's spring loaded. We'll slide a blade in. We use high profile blades on here. Once in a while, a blade will get stuck down lower past the lip. If that happens to you, you might want to use another blade to just kind of push it out. Don't use fingers if you can avoid it. Okay, again, we're going to just clamp it and a little thumb push gently is enough. And I'm going to do what's called facing. Now, I see my block is a little bit crooked, so I'm going to try and just adjust that now. Too close to this chuck head, so I really want to back that off, and I probably should have backed it off quite a while ago. So I'm going to use my retract button and back this off. That's good enough. And now I'm going to do what's called facing. So I'm going to bring it forward one push forward. Now I, I can see right away that I'm getting this top corner, and very much this is basically a microtome inside of a freezing unit. So it's, it works on the same function. So I'm going to lock my flywheel on this side. This lever here, once you get the chuck in and it's tightened, you should never have to touch this one. This is the one you're going to want to fool with. The flywheel's locked, so I'm going to release this lever. Now, other microtomes, newer microtomes, have an XY or an XYZ. Ours, you have to manually do it with your fingers. So I saw it was doing this corner, so I'm going to lift it up and I'm going to put it over that way and I'm going to hold it there and see where I'm at. So it takes a little finesse to kind of get used to that. Again, you're just going to give it a little push with your thumb. That's all you need. You don't need to crank it hard back. You'll actually damage the unit. Let's see where I'm at. And I see I'm, I'm nice and even now, but I'm still to the right. So I'm going to release it. Holding it in place and tilt it a little more that way, a little more to the right. And let's see where I'm at. Okay, that should be good. It's a little to the left, but that's acceptable. All right, so now I'm going to face until I get into my tissue. Now you don't want to come so far forward that you're like, like this on your tissue. You don't want that. You want to um, just back it off if you find yourself in that situation. So just a gentle tap. So if you've come too far forward, just a gentle tap back. It'll take a little finesse to get used to it. You don't want to gouge the block. That's not your point. Your point is to do real thick sections. If, you don't, if you're having troubles with this and you're just not used to it, um, I think you can set this trim thickness. Let's see how this works. No. So I'll bring it. See what this does is it brings it forward 40 microns exactly as you touch it. And I still have it. I'm just going to be getting into my tissue. I see it's starting to get a little dark in the center there. Now I know the whole front part of this, this is going to be a um, mouse head. And I know I don't need the whole first third of this block because it was nasal turbinates. So I can cut into this quite a bit more than I might something else. All right, now this is a good point since I'm just, this isn't my area of interest, but I'm into the tissue. So I'm going to put myself a fresh blade in here. And the reason is I'm going to start adjusting my roll plate. So again, I'm going to press this and I'm going to use the end of one of these brushes and push the 
the blade out. And we'll throw that one away since I've used it twice. To adjust the um, roll plate, so a little goes a long way. You never want to just plop this down because you're actually going to damage this nice sharp edge. This roll plate, as I discussed when cleaning it, has eight separate edges. So if one edge eventually gets damaged, you can just take this out and flip it around and then you'll have this edge. And then when that gets damaged, you can take it out and flip it the other way. So you'll have it, actually have eight edges. Okay. Now I can see our roll plate is nicely set already. Let's just say it wasn't because I wanna need to show you when it's not what's happening. say it's off. I don't want to cut beautifully, wouldn't you know it? So it's not changing. So now it's um, too low. What you want for the roll plate is just the slightest bit above the blade. This has these little, the little dots. I don't really go by the dots so much as these like little lines in the actual knob itself. And again, usually a little goes a long way. If it's slightly off, usually a couple, just a, the tiniest little turn one way, and then you try it. And if that doesn't work, um, go back a few more the other way. And you Okay, so I'm going to try and turn it back a little bit. Now it's starting, but I see it's trying to wrinkle. So it's not quite there yet. This is a fresh blade, so I don't want to see that. Okay, so it's still off, obviously. It's not rolling underneath. Let's try it again. Now it's trying. It's still not quite as smooth as we had it before. And there we go again. So, okay, so um, I've got my section. You can see the sample. Right there, we've got the roll plate adjusted. There is my sample, very smooth ribbon. And then we can just pick it up with a slide. Now I like to touch, you saw me touch that down on there with a touch of a little frost or just a touch with the end of a brush. And that just gives me full control over my picking it up so it doesn't hop onto the slide. It gives me more control. So I can position it on the slide wherever I want. So now I wanna do several rows, so I'm gonna start here. And I'm going to just pick it up, and that gives us a very smooth, nice section. Okay, moving right along. Now I see that um, this um, chuck is down. If ever you come into this cryostat and you see this down like this, immediately make it your habit to back off the chuck. What you don't want to do is come up onto the back of this knife holder accidentally because somebody didn't lock it and didn't raise the chuck. So just always make it a habit every time you come to use this cryostat, back off the chuck no matter what. You don't want to come down on it. You don't want to come up behind it. You'll permanently ruin the knife holder. A couple pushes in this case is enough. Okay, now there's also a brush method. I recommend everybody learn this brush method because if a roll plate is acting up and several cryostats don't have a good functioning roll plate, so um, to be an expert at doing this, you really need to learn how to use the brush method. I use this brush. You, some people like using a fatter brush. What you want is you don't want it to be too soft because it's just not going to help you. If you have too soft of a brush, cut off some of the ends of it to give it a little firm grip for yourself. For the brush method, as you come down, let's get it forward some more because I backed it off. Okay, for the brush method, as you come down, you rest your hand on something over here. you pull at the same time. 
And it's going to take some coordination to get used to that. I take my other hand and I grab another um, brush and I touch it down and I have another section. Now I make that look easy, but it really is like patting your head and rubbing your belly. And again, I have full control over my ribbon so I can orientate it anywhere I want. The one thing, it's okay to overlap the OCT on a section, but what you don't want to do is have the actual tissue into this OCT from the previous section because then the, the section won't adhere to the slide. So I'm going to overlap OCT, but I'm going to make sure the tissue itself, my area of interest, is on the actual slide. And again, another really smooth, nice section. Okay, so here, let's do the brush method again. Now I'll use a smaller brush. It doesn't matter which one, just whatever one you get comfortable with. Get some of the debris out of the way. You grab it, you get a little roll on the bottom, and as you get that, then you do a smooth stroke all the way down. You don't stop, I'm gonna waste that one. You don't stop in the middle of your cut. You do a smooth stroke all the way down. Now ideally, you want to stop just the slightest bit before it breaks away from the top edge and then get this edge down so you have more control over it. Another thing is you want to make sure you pick up on the frosted end. Usually I have numbering since this is um, the nasal terminates and that I'm not interested in. I'm just demonstrating for you. Um, I didn't have anything, but we put an X on this just to show you we're always picking up from the same side. Now, if you, another thing you'll notice is I'm not plopping my tissue on the actual knife plate. I'm not going down all the way. What happens when you do that is you create a freeze artifact and the section can get damaged and leave part of it on the actual blade holder. What you want it to do is slowly pick it up itself, not pressing down on the actual plate. Okay, let's do one more brush method to give you the demonstrate that again. So I got a little roll started. Now I'm going to one smooth stroke get past my tissue. Again, I went a little too far. I should have stopped at the top, so I'll have to touch it down. And then you can use, some people like the bigger um, brush because they feel like they have more to, the bigger brush grips more for them, there's more to work with. So again, you take this and you do one full stroke. I like to touch it down. Now some people don't touch it down like I do, but again, it's, I like the, the control of that. Okay, now that one's going to have a little bit of a wrinkle on the end because of the way I picked it up and it kind of folded just a little bit, but the rest are smooth. Now the, what you don't want to do with picking up with a brush is you don't want to do something like this where you're just brushing, 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 and then you're slowly, and then you stop and then you keep going. Now, I did get my section. A lot of times you won't, but I guarantee you when you look at that section, it's gonna have some lines and some flaws from stopping in the middle of it. So you do not want to do that. And this, you don't want to, you want it one smooth stroke. Okay. Now let's show you again the role play. So the roll plate we adjusted, I made that look easy. Sometimes um, as you're cutting and stuff, it gets a slight bit off. So just slightest bit one way. And if, then if it doesn't work, go back and go back the other way. The roll plate is the easiest way if you have one.
Again, I don't want it, these other sections that I just cut to be touching the cold plate. It's kind of like sticking your tongue on a telephone pole. You know, kind of ruin your first layer of skin on your tongue. Okay, now we're going to let Monica try this and see how this works for her. There is Monica. Say hi. All right, so got another section. Now a little bit goes a long way. Again, we had that turn. So if the um, if this starts acting up, and you've tried adjustments with the roll plate, and it's still kind, it's wanting to sort of cut, but it's not really cutting. That means you probably have the blade getting dull, or some buildup behind the blade of some sections that might have cut. From behind it's still cutting nicely right now while well, it was I might have just warmed it as I when I touched it let's see so now it's cutting so what you're gonna do when it starts getting a dull blade or there's the possibility of some um, debris behind it and it'll just start acting up and you've tried the roll plate to see if it may be readjusted slightly and that's still not working um, the other thing you'll see is your section starting to cut a little rougher, or you may see a knife line. What you don't want to do is you don't want to actually touch this blade. If you touch that blade with this metal or your fingers, you can actually create a knife line. So to, there's two things you can do. I tend to actually move the blade itself and by sliding it down. And again, you've got to push the spring-loaded plate and gently move it down to a different area, fresh area. But the other thing you can do, and I can see my blade is going down underneath, which that does happen, so this, here's how you take care of that. You still hold it because you don't want to damage the edges of your blade. Okay. So what other people like to do is this lever here will actually release this and let you slide it this way or that way. The only problem with that is this, the design of this um, knife holder is such that if you start getting towards this edge, you have to take into account that this little lever is in your way. And that's why I tend to not slide the whole thing. Another reason I tend to not slide the whole knife plate is because it um, readjusts the blade a little bit and then you, you really should back it off and um, make sure you don't come gouge your tissue and come it comes forward too fast. So I actually prefer the moving the blade itself. Except when it sinks down in. Okay, so I'm going to push that again, just a little push. And it's in a fresh part of the blade. I'm going to bring it forward until I know it's so I brought it forward and then I saw I went too far forward so I was like give it a quick tap back because I didn't want to go too far. Now every time you moved it because remember I moved the whole thing here so it's realigned everything just that little bit. Remember we're working in micrometers here. All right. And then I would pick that section up. Now let's make sure my roll plate is still aligned nicely. 
un no, nope, it's off. So, because again, every time you move the blade, or especially if you move the whole holder itself, it's going to align everything just slightly different. So let's try that and see if that works. No. Maybe a little more. And there it is again. So it's it's within a range. It's, it's really close. It's set up nicely that a little turn one way or the other should solve the issue of it. And I have one little area there for my tissue. Well, i got several tissues on one side. Now, another thing I, I like to do, this is a quite a big block face for this tissue. So I might actually take, I've got my flywheel locked. Rather than, because I want several tissues on there, let's say I wanted a third row in here, I would actually trim up this block face nice and evenly because you want it perpendicular to the blade. And if you're a beginner at this, you're gonna take this blade out. And I might just trim up my block face a little bit to make it smaller so I can fit more sections on the slide. This just takes some practice at doing this. You know, you just shave a little at a time. Don't try to go too much. Because then you're pressing too hard and you don't want you, you don't want to cut yourself. So make sure you kind of brace your hands down below here. And you can always come in on the side and trim it away. Now, if you've mounted your block nicely, because um, it, it won't come off the chuck. If it does happen to come off the chuck, you'll just remount it on there again and then put it back in and realign everything. Okay. You get the idea. So now we've got a smaller block face here, and I should be able to fit more tissue on a slide than I was before. Okay, now you're going to have some fun cutting. That'll be a little different. So again, things are probably aligned slightly differently by doing that. So let's see if, how our roll plate is doing after we get a knife blade in there. And we'll use this one. Now, the knife blade needs a, a, like 20 seconds or so to kind of cool down. As I'm talking, it cools itself. Maybe 10 seconds is enough, actually, to kind of, and I had slid this earlier, so I'm going to get it back over this way, tighten that slightly. If this ever starts gouging into your block, like if you come down here and you know that, um, you know, you're in a good area and it's not because you're too close to the blade, it's just trying to gouge into the the blade and, and grab it like it wants to chunk your tissue out that means something is loose so you need to go around and check what is loose did you not tighten this did you not tighten that did you forget to tighten this this or is the actual tissue itself trying to come off the chuck it will gouge and wreck your tissue or a good portion of your tissue so if you feel it grab stop and find out what's loose Okay, looks like it's still pretty aligned. All right, that's for you. Want to try it again? Sure. I need um, five minutes for the cleanup. So, let me try this. And while Monica's starting to practice again, I want to show you this real quick. These are the knife blades that I recommend for our use. We use these. However, um, the Awatrami lab uses this, and I'm finding that these Sturkeys, they're nice and sharp, and they cut equally as smooth as our AccuEdge, but the Sturkeys have been lasting longer. So we may, um, you can order either one. They're both. This microtome, if you're having an extra fatty piece of tissue, 
Or for your information, if you're wondering why it's cutting thick and thin, sometimes thick and thin means it's loose. That's something to think about. But another thing, a little trick is, if you push it forward and then you rock it back, you've now doubled your section thickness. So now you're going to cut, your next section is going to be, I have it at 10, it's now going to be 20. So it's just something to be aware of. I push it forward and then you come back and then you go forward again. You've now doubled your section thickness. But it's only the next section. The ones after that will be back on schedule. So, so rocking it does that. So if you find yourself with a big thick section, you might have done that. Okay. Um, now, not all cry sets do that, but many do do that very thing. So, especially some a lot of the older ones. Okay, so we were cutting at 20. I want to align this again and make sure it's not aligned because I was messing with it. Okay, there we go. All right, I'm going to use Monica's slide here. All right, now for the cleanup. First thing to do is lock the um, blade, or lock the flywheel so the truck can't come down. I remove um, the brushes temporarily. Make sure that the um, roll plate is kind of down. Now I like to clean this back tray first, but we're gonna remove the chuck. So I just turn it, now since I didn't crank it, I could easily turn it and then just remove my chuck. Now if you just stick this stem in a little bit of water, you don't need to get the OCT wet, just stick the stem in water for about 10 seconds, this whole thing will just come right off. You can wrap it in foil and store it. If you're going to cut tomorrow, I put it in minus 20. If you're going to be a while before you come back to it, then you put it back in minus 80. But for now, I'm going to set it in here. But it'll lift right off. I mean, seriously, 10 seconds. Just dip it in a little bit of water. This is just the stem. Just wait like 10 seconds, and you really can just easily lift that right off. Okay, so we're going to always remove the blade. Never leave a blade in a cryostat. So I'm going to put this, or you can slide it with the brush. I'm going to save this blade because it was pretty fresh. We can use it for facing another day or for practicing. So I'm going to remove this bottom tray here. Now, I'm not going to clean all under here, and I'm not going to clean under these. I do that when I do a full shutdown and clean every couple months. And we take a bigger brush and just brush it off into the garbage. And then I might even, if it's really bad, take a little bit of alcohol. Now, I like using gauze, and you're going to use 100% alcohol. I, buy, I use the same bottle over and over and keep filling it with the bulk alcohol. You do not want to get alcohol on this cylinder, the advance and retract cylinder on the chuck. So you can just wipe the front of this, wipe the blade holder, and then you can brush some of the extra stuff off. And then the second tray I remove, and I move this forward, is this one because that means the other debris went into that this tray. Now, if you ever um, try to turn this um, flywheel and it's not wanting to, and it's not wanting to go down all the way and it's feeling really funny, don't force it. What that means is this chuck head is too far back and it's actually hitting this and won't let it come down all the way. So, Monica, you can feel that? Yes. Okay. So that's all you need to do is move it forward about three or four seconds and then it clears it again. That's a good thing to know. So.
I wipe off this. Now I don't wipe this top glass with 100% alcohol because it's got a little bit of a coating on it and it leaves it streaky. So, but I do like to wipe it off. So either I use glass cleaner or just use this. And then I wipe this all out and get all the debris out with 100% alcohol. I wipe this. I give the roll plate just a little gentle wipe. And that's it. Put everything back so it keeps cold for the next person. And we're finished. Just kind of clean up the area.